I just want to know one thing. Was Patrick Kane a little upset that the Leafs didn't pick him up? Welcome back to Hockey Cast. My name is Mike. And uh, yeah, that was a rough one. Leafs lose 5 3 against the Blackhawks. I mean, that's the bottom, most bottomest team in the league. Um, Patrick Kane gets a hat trick. That's unbelievable. Okay, so there's some specific points I want to talk about uh, from the game, first of all. The Leafs allow the first goal again. And uh, Lilligren this time. But more importantly, all the defense uh, on the team there, they, they got to close the gap quicker because Kane had all the space and time he needed. He was just pushing the defense back and back and back. Well, there comes a time you got to challenge them. You got to close that space quickly. These guys are used to the defense backing up on them, and if they are backing up, they're going to take it. Which brings me to my next question. The Leafs were wearing their, their black uniforms tonight. Um, do you think that the puck disappears uh, when it goes through uh, Little Grin's legs and goes in the top shelf on uh, Samsonov? I think it's. I think it does. I think it. Uh, Samsonov couldn't pick up the puck quick enough um, because he couldn't really see where it was going. Um, after it uh, came through Lilligren. But if he would have picked up time and space, <laughs> he probably wouldn't have even got the shot off like that because it would have been rushed, right? Like how many times, I wonder how many times does a play like that have to go down before the defense clue in, hey, limit his time and space. But now the next time it's going to happen, they're going to go, oh, I got a limited time and space. So they do it and they totally, <laughs> they totally don't box him out. You still have to have, you know, position. So this is what I predict. The next game that uh, a situation like that happens, the defense are going to close up, but then they're going to totally lose position and, and the winger, the center, whoever, it's just going to skate right around them and uh, they're going to be all alone in front of the net. Either that or the defense is going to take a penalty because they have no choice. They, they, they lost position. They're going to have to grab them. So, but they can't keep, they got to do something. They got to close the space, but at the same time, keep position on the player between them and the net so that they, can't do those kinds of things and to shoot it right through them like you got to block those i don't i don't know it happens way too often for uh it to be a one-off you know it, it happens now and again but it happens a lot uh to the leafs that defensive core needs some help in a big way um morgan riley scores and ties it up and he scored his 400th uh, career point tonight so congratulations to him 400th career point very good um brody he was shot blocking early in the second which wasn't was pretty good um i kind of forget the exact instance because I wrote that down because it was a big block. But now I kind of forget uh, the actual play. So when Kampf got the penalty, um, he was on the ice. It was, you know, it was around the, the again, it was against the boards. He was, he was down on the ice. He was in the neutral zone and he had a stick straight up in the air. But he was on the ice. And, uh, I don't know who it was, but Chicago ran right into his stick. Why is Kampf getting the penalty for that? That's that's one thing that just boggled my mind is Kampf's holding his stick 
up. He's not waving it around or anything. He's just, he, he got checked, fell down. So he's laying down on the ice, completely spread out on the ice. His stick is straight up in the air. It isn't moving or waving around. Chicago knocks their face right into it. And, and Kampf gets the penalty. I, that's a tough one to take. And uh, what, what, what also was funny tonight was listening to the commentators on TV uh, calling the play. And they were talking about Riley and O'Reilly. <laughs> it was so funny because you got uh, Riley on the point, passing it into O'Reilly. O'Reilly shoots and, and deflects it back to Riley, over to O'Reilly. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, I don't even know how they can keep it straight sometimes. It was, it was, I, it was just funny. I just you know noticed it in that one instance in the second period when they got Chicago... Uh, pinned in their own end and I just noticed it on a few cycle plays and it, I thought it was pretty funny when Kane scored in the second uh, the second one I believe he tripped or somebody tripped Hall into the boards Hall was on his wrong side and got tripped into the boards which left Kane wide open with the puck no call on the play and then Kane scores the defense are giving Kane way too much respect on that last goal he had, the third goal, the, the hat trick goal. Again, time and space. Get your stick active because they're just, you know, shadowing him. And then Kane just, you know, does whatever he wants to do. But they got to close that space in order so they can uh, either pressure the play or, you know, get the puck back or at least limit Kane's ability to just do whatever he wants to do and wander all over the ice with the puck. So they're definitely giving Kane too much respect in, in that regard. It was nice to see uh, uh, Achari uh, get his first goal as a Leaf late in the second period. That was a nice goal. It was a good uh, hard-fought goal. Um, and it was nice to see him him get that when it was a, a rebound coming back out in front of the net. And he was tied up, but he did what he had to do. And uh, he, you know, got his stick free and whacked it in. So it was it was a good effort to uh, to get his stick free in order to get that puck in the net. So at the start of the third period, the Leafs were dominating early. Um, but the whole night, the passes just seemed to be a little off. And again, Brody, and I have there in big capital letters, close the gap. Uh, again, the, the defense isn't good enough. They, uh, they're giving way too much room for their opponents. And uh, that's allowing them to set up plays. It's allowing them to, you know, basically do whatever they want to do. And they use the defense of the Leafs as screens <laughs> to set up the play. So it's a little tough when that happens and the and it goes in or, a, a, you know, a pass and the, the goalie doesn't see. When you got defense that aren't aggressive enough. You know, uh, and then I'll say that and then they... Um, then next game they're too aggressive and take a lot of penalties and, and a lot of stupid plays. So they just got to learn how to play uh, a tougher brand of hockey. The defense just got to pick it up. Um, and then that Marner play, that set play, uh, was it O'Reilly? No, uh, Riley. There, see, even I'm getting it mixed up. It was Riley. It was at his own blue line. He saw Marner streaking, so he just blasted it to uh, into the Chicago zone. It bounced off the uh, the boards. Marner beat out the icing and uh, took it in and deked out the goalie. Now that was a good set play, but uh, yeah. And then what else do I got here? 
Oh, right. This is how the Chicago Blackhawks went ahead. Camp coming in on the right side. And he's in deep. He's got to make a better play, a better option. Because you got four guys in deep. And he blasts it at the net and misses on a, on a sharp angle. Which, you know, obviously it hits the boards and just goes out and, and flies out of the zone. And Chicago has an odd man rush and scores. Camp's got to be more aware uh, when that happens. That when he's in deep like that, have a look. Obviously... If you see all your other players in deep, then don't do what you just did. But again, that happens quite often with this team where they get odd man rushes because of themselves and their own foolish plays that they make like that. So there's a few things that uh, they definitely have to work on. They have to be a lot more consistent defensively. Uh, the defense it's it's frustrating to watch the defense struggle so badly uh you know and and hall if i look on the stats here of tonight's game the game sheet here actually i'm gonna let you in here there we go there's the there's the game sheet for tonight if we look at hall and we look at his uh he, he's not even a minus how is that? He's the one. You'd think that, you know, he was the one that was noticeable out there causing all the, the bad plays. Um, is it because the guys are covering up for him? Are the forwards coming back and, and bailing him out? 22 minutes for Hall tonight. That's way too much playing time for Hall, I think. He should be down around the 18, 19 minute mark um, to be effective. And we found that out last year. Last year, and maybe it was, was it earlier this year, but it was definitely last year that Hall uh, was a lot more effective around the 18-minute mark. They got him here tonight, 22 minutes. Timmons uh, Riley was a minus three. And he was playing 21, 22 minutes of ice time. But uh, so frustrating when you see these stats here. Because everyone's saying it's Hall. But, and I believe, I know it is. But he's not on the ice when the goal goes in. So is he on the ice uh, that creates the rush against and then changes is it, you know are they being pinned in the in their own end like i don't know and let's see here you see lilligren why isn't he you know um okay so here we go hall he got an assist so that might have negated his one minus there. Um, who knows? But uh, now Lilligren, how how did he escape with uh, zeros across the board here? Wasn't it him on the ice that uh, when the first goal went in through his legs? Pretty sure it was. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't say who's on the ice here necessarily. I'd have to look somewhere else. But uh, it's it's definitely frustrating uh, when you have a defensive core that uh, isn't playing near physical enough or determined enough. Like, and then they'll get they'll they'll get talked to about it. Let's say, and then they'll come out and they'll be over aggressive they'll be pursuing uh or they'll be over pursuing <laughs> and then you know the teams just skate right around them they just pass around them a lot of gaping holes forwards have to come back so i don't know it uh the Leafs should never have lost this game against 
a bottom team like the black the Hawks. They are if we go to the standings. Let's go to league. Where are they? Oh, right there. They're thirtieth with that win tonight. So they had 39 points. They were the bottom of the barrel in the league until tonight when they won against the Leafs. You know what? It almost seems like, um, let me uh, come back here. There we go. It almost seems like uh, teams that play the Leafs or Tampa um, or Boston, they always seem to try and get up for the game. But... Uh, well, Boston, you know, they haven't lost too many games against bottom seed teams this year. Uh, Tampa, they've they've lost a few. But Toronto, you know, you, as a fan, you can feel it. <laughs> you can feel how it's going to go. And uh, even before the game drop, you're like, you're almost preparing yourself for a loss. Like tonight, I thought, you know, this is a good chance we're going to lose this game. Uh, it's, it's Chicago on a back-to-back. Leafs are feeling good. And sure enough, it happened. I don't know why they just can't play with their own structure. Forget about the other team. Uh, Chicago really disrupt, disrupted uh, the Leafs gameplay tonight. tonight. Uh, and it was you know, noticeable because all the passes were off. There was no real flow to the game uh, for Toronto. It looked terrible. Uh, so I don't know why the Leafs can't just come in, put the work boots on, and just play their game anyway. Just work hard all the time, every shift. Do what they need to do because they know why they're there. Each player has their, has their own um, assignments they're there as part of the team. Anybody that misses their assignment, it lets the whole team down and then other players have to pick up for that or they they just fold and lose the game. Um, but they got a long way to go before the playoffs. That is for certain. And we already know we're getting Tampa again. So we need, we need a couple of practices uh, with... Um, so that uh, O'Reilly and uh, Achari can uh, get into the th into the, into the swing of things, and um, then maybe all the players will feel a little more relaxed with with the additions uh, because we got to pick it up. Uh, and and with the defense, when Riley was missing, the defense played perfect. They were playing exactly how they should be playing. They were tenacious. They were playing um, with some meanness. They were finishing checks. And they were really dogging the puck. The puck. But since uh, Riley came back, it's totally gone back to the, to the way it was before uh, near the beginning of the season. That's unacceptable. Now, you know, we have uh, 25 games, I think before the playoffs it's time to take these 25 games and start you know getting ready for the playoffs start improving start improving your work ethic you have the talent you know you have the talent so now it's just about work ethic and i think that's why they brought o'reilly in and achari to teach them a bit of work ethic through um through their own play. All right. And, and of course, O'Reilly, he, uh, he's a champ. He's a champion. He's a Stanley cup champion, um, with the uh, St. Louis blues. And the year that they won that they had a, a tumultuous start to the season, but then picked it up. They found their game. So O'Reilly has a lot of experience that he's going to bring to the table. It's just going to take some time. So we got to utilize these next 25 games and just work. Don't worry about what the other team's doing. Just work. 
If they're holding you, go through them. Work through it. Because there was a lot of, there was a few calls that were missed tonight. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, you can blame the refs all you want. But uh, it's not going to do you any good. You have to play anyway. You have to play through that. So at the risk of rambling any further, I'm going to let you go. And uh, the Leafs, they just got to play better. They got to play their game all the time now. I'm just trying to find out um, when is their next game. I believe it's against Buffalo on the 21st. Is that Tuesday? Yes. So Toronto at Buffalo, 7.30 on Tuesday. But of course, Buffalo is going to be up for the game. Um, let's see what the Leafs can do. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me. Thanks for listening, and we'll uh, talk to you again shortly.